my goodness, I want them to see you. My show and tell is M Melissa's cat. And he's been sitting in here with me this morning, but he's about to get tired of me. Can you say hello? Look, 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 look. He's mad. He's mad. He's mad. He is so pretty, y'all. I wanted y'all to see how pretty he is. When she got him and he was a kitten, his hair was short, but he did have some longer hair in his ears. But look how nice and pretty he is. Say good morning. I'm mad. Okay, I gotta put him down. He just did not want to be show and tell today. Let me go close my door. I bet he's ready. He likes to go outside and he likes to spend more time. He likes to spend more time outside than he does inside. If you're just tuning in, I, I was showing everybody my sister's cat. She has two. Anyway, um, I think he's ready to go outside this morning. So he did not want me to continue to hold him. I was looking to see if there's anything in here I could show y'all for show and tell. Besides the cat. But I really don't see anything. So that was our show and tell. Um, I hope y'all are having a blessed day. She's got a little plaque in here I could show y'all. Let, let me get it. So, I worked so hard day before yesterday and yesterday, but not quite as much yesterday. I just could not get up and get Bible study because we had so much to do yesterday. I know that sounds terrible, but oh my goodness, have we worked hard. Y'all are going to love the apartment when I show it to you. Uh, I went to yesterday when I got up, I went to Dollar General and I got there before they opened at 8 o'clock. And so, by now, yesterday, I was already at Dollar General sitting in the parking lot waiting for them to open. They have a Dollar General market here. And I got almost everything to decorate that apartment with at Dollar General. And it is super cute. Super cute. So, uh, let's see. At Home Depot, I got the Island. It's a workbench. It goes in a garage, but I made it into a island in the kitchen. And then, um, what else did we get at Home Depot? Um, the, the top for it is four foot, and it's a butcher block, and it was $98 for the top. So I got that. And I got a light bulb, and that's what I got at Home Depot. Okay, oh, and a clock. And then um, I went to Dollar General and I got almost everything that decorates the walls and decor. The only thing is I went by a furniture store to get a couch. It's actually a love seat uh, to go in the apartment. And they had a holder with a little bar on it and a couple of glass jars and I got those. But everything else is Dollar General and it's super cute. We already had the bedspread because it was on the bed upstairs up here already. And it's really pretty. So I plan on making a video. I don't know how good my internet's going to be over there. But um, we're going to try to show it to you. I promise today I really am. I don't have as much physical stuff to do today. So I should be able to video. Uh, I got a lot of my stuff in from Amazon Prime already yesterday. It was supposed to go today. So my kitchen is really good enough now to actually cook you something in, except there's no groceries. <laughs> the only thing we have in our kitchen right now is milk, <clears throat> coffee creamer, <clears throat> excuse me, spaghetti and meatballs. <clears throat> I picked those up for when we were working. And uh, that's it. Bananas. Melissa has this in here. 
It says prayer is the key to heaven, but faith unlocks the door. That's pretty, ain't it? It don't have a um, tag on it. So I don't really know where she got it, but it's cute. Or if she even had it. I, th I don't think this was Mama's. I think that this was something Melissa brought in, but I'm not positive. Uh, it could have been my brother's for all I know, because this used to be his office. The room we're in right now, when I was in my 20s, was my office. Okay, and that door, you know, that big door I have that I used in Paulding County, and now I use it um, in the sunroom at home in St. Mary's, was in this in this room, and I used it to lay out my plans, because if you don't know it, I used to do architectural work, commercial work, and uh, that's when I used that door. Yes, I have overdone it. My feet and my legs are awful. I mean, they really are. When I got up, when I, when I sat down last night, my feet were hurting so bad I could feel my heart beating in them. And they just vibrate. My feet are, nobody really understands how bad my feet really are. And I was walking through the house, um, creeping through the house. My sister said, you look just like Mama walking. And it's because my feet hurt so bad. But I've worn my tennis shoes almost the whole time. And today, like I said, I don't plan on overdoing it, I hope. Um, but anyway, I love y'all. And I'm sorry I missed yesterday. Um, Angie, I'm glad to see you on here this morning. I'm glad to see all of y'all on here this morning. But Angie's had a lot of health problems and has been in and out of the hospital and i hope you're doing better angie um i've got quite a few prayer requests so i'll copy and paste those today too um and i guess that's it i was telling my sister yesterday she was up and about and i said you're so blessed to have good feet and she goes what do you mean i said i mean you're just blessed to have good feet nobody knows how blessed they are with good feet she can wear flip-flops. She can, um, her feet don't never hurt. Now her back bothers her some because she picks up Tillman, but um, she has good feet. All right, so we're going to start Bible study today. And I promise I'm going to try to show y'all some. I was drinking my coffee this morning. I went down there. I'll be glad when my Turvis glasses come in. I hope they come in by Amazon today. Because these glasses, the most I had, I had one while ago, and it was a coffee cup, insulated. It was an old Alabama cup. That thing was dripping coffee all over me, and I didn't even know it. And I looked down, there was coffee all over me. So the next time I went down there, I transferred my coffee to this, and that way it won't. This actually comes came from my, ne my niece's coffee shop down in uh, Dothan, Alabama. That's their symbol. But you can probably tell I'm tired. Boy, am I different than I was the first day I come on here when I was got when I got here. I was super excited. I was so full of energy, and now I am drained. Um, and you said her husband's still sick. Okay. All right. Um, so anyway, we're going to start Bible study. Uh, somebody had said yesterday, or day before yesterday, um, I guess they're thinking of, that I'm on the subject of lost people. And they were like, uh, and I don't remember who it was, and it's a, it's a legitimate question. And she said, um, why would somebody who's lost be watching a Bible study? And um, for one, some people... Or like Chris was quite religious, uh, read his Bible every day, but he was lost. Okay. Um, and the main reason is because he went down to an altar to get saved because his friends did. Not because he was drawn by the Holy Spirit or felt like he was a sinner in need of a savior. He did it because everybody else was doing it. 
And believe it or not, there's a lot of people out there that proclaim salvation that are not saved because of things like that. So there's many of us may watch a Bible study um, and not be saved. It, it happens. Uh, this lesson that I am bringing to you guys through this man's commentary is very important that we understand not only just for us if we are not saved, but even when you're saved so that you know how important it is to bring people to the Lord. Okay. Um, so while it may not be directed at you, remember that all of God's words, no matter where they're from in the Bible, can apply to your daily life, whether you're saved or unsaved, and they're very important. So never think um, that you don't need something, because we always need anything he has to say uh, for di different reasons. Um, for all you know, you could run into somebody in a couple of days that's not saved and be able to say something to them that triggers salvation due to something that you've listened to in this Bible lesson. Okay, so God uses us for a reason. He puts us in places at the right time for different reasons, and you never know until afterward uh, how you can apply it or how you may use it later. Um, and so that's important. All of it's important. Um, we're going to hop over, and I'm not saying that you implied that it wasn't important. I'm just saying that um, I hope that it, uh, is a good explanation of your question. Today, we're going to be in part three of um, the contrast. Well, this is about the estimate of the, the lost. And um, we're going to be in Ephesians chapter two, verses one and two. That's Ephesians chapter two, verses one and two. Let me see if I still have that open. I don't think I do. Let me open it right quick. Ephesians 2. It says, And you hath he quickened, made alive, is what that means. And you has he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, wherein in times past, you walked according to the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, and the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. So he's saying that um, you were made alive, but you once were dead in trespasses and sin. You walked according to the course of the world, According to the prince of the power of the air, which is Satan, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. And that's what we're going to study today. He says, in Ephesians 2, verses 1 and 2, the contrast between the saved and the unsaved is first drawn at the point of possessing or not possessing the divine life. And you, has he quickened, made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. And he reads the verse that I just read. He says, this death is not physical, for the dead ones are said to be walking according to the course of the world. So he's letting you know he's not referencing dead people. It's dead in a sense of their relationship with God. Okay. It says um, the desires, the death is not physical for the ones dead are said to be walking according to the course of the world. The desires of which walk are centered in the things of the world system. And if we're not careful, ourselves, we too can center our desires 
on the things of the world system when we do not pray and read the word of god and have a close relationship we tend to lean more towards our flesh which is centered in the world system okay it says they are also said to be walking according to the prince of the power of the air satan the spirit that now works in and energizes the children of disobedience this classification the children of disobedience includes all who have not been made alive by the power of god disobedience here is a state of being and is the federal it is federal rather than personal by one man's disobedience adam referencing adam and eve in the garden many were made sinners so also by the obedience of one christ shall many be made righteous thus the acceptableness of the saved one is also a state and it is federal rather than personal um what he's saying here is it's everybody it's a state that we're born in okay um it's not a per it's not personal just for you that you were born in sin it's a state of being for everyone for adam brought sin upon all of us okay he being in christ is a child of obedience the unsaved one being an adam is a child of disobedience in adam disobedient and lost in christ obedient righteous and acceptable to god he became obedient unto death this is a verse out of the bible um he's referencing romans 5 19 and ephesians 1 6 it says he became obedient unto death even the death of the cross and he's referencing christ there before the infinite holiness of god no person saved or unsaved can rightfully claim within his own merit being made his self to be obedient and righteous in the sight of god yet the weakest person so what he's saying is no matter who you are you cannot personally claim to be righteous in the sight of god by your own merit by the things you do okay yet the weakest person who stands in christ and what he's saying here is those who are in christ who are saved by the grace of god through the blood of jesus christ the weakest person the person that's never grown in christ the person that's never read their bible and never studied by virtue of that position is a child of obedience in the sight of god even if they're weak they're still a child of obedience because they've accepted jesus christ as their savior so there's two states you're either a child of god and obedient or you're disobedient and still a child of the devil still disobedient okay it says in all the children of disobedience regardless of professions or conduct no matter what you do no matter what you do for christ how you work nothing no, no matter any of that if you haven't received jesus as your personal savior you're a child of disobedience satan is said to be your energizing power okay the energy of this mighty being may inspire refinement education culture and the externals of religion for it is not against these external virtues that satan is opposed 
So you could teach religion. You could be an educator. You could be uh, a giver. You could do a lot of things. They're external virtues. But Satan is not opposed to that. Okay. His hostility is intelligently directed against the saving grace of God, which is a widely differing issue from that which the problems of personal conduct present. So many times, I'm going to throw this in here. So many times when we people say, oh, the devil made me do it. That's not true. Um, the system in general, the world as a whole, the world system, you're doing it against your Holy Spirit, if you're saved, that lives inside of you because your flesh, it's your fault, not Satan's. Your flesh is being tempted and you're falling for it. Don't blame it on Satan. Blame it on yourself and your flesh. In other words, you're not abiding by the Spirit of God you're obeying the flesh part okay because here it says the main thing that satan is opposed to is the saving grace of god and that's why it's so important that if you ever feel like you're not saved if you ever doubt your salvation satan doesn't make you do that and this is why his main thing is that you never get saved. So if you're not saved, he's very happy. That's his number one goal for you never to accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. So if you if you're not saved, he's not going to tell you you're not saved. Why? Because he's so happy that you're not. That's the last thing he would bring up to you. The only thing that prompts you to believe that you are not saved is the Holy Spirit of God. That's his business. Salvation is his business. Okay? Not the devil's business. The devil's business is very happy and excited that you're not saved. Now... If you ever feel like you're under conviction and you and you just aren't happy, you don't feel secure in your salvation. You ever get under conviction when uh, you're at church or during a Bible study when someone's talking about the saving grace of God. If the Holy Spirit prompts you or makes you feel guilty or makes you feel you may not be saved or that you might need the Savior. You need to perk up and listen. And don't ever let anybody tell you that it's the devil. Because that's the last thing the devil would do. It's the first thing the Holy Spirit does. So remember that the Holy Spirit's job is to show you you're not saved. The devil's job is to make you happy and he's thrilled that you're not okay and this is a prime example of that I, I, I wanted to explain that to you he doesn't talk about that in here but i wanted to explain that to you because that's very important that he says right here that the devil's hostility is intelligently directed against the saving grace of god which is a widely differing issue from that which the problems of personal conduct present. He is not interested in, the devil is not interested in you being evil or uh, your personal conduct. Okay. Satan is said to be the energizing. He energizes the unsaved within all the spheres of their present activity. Okay. So if you're unsaved, Satan is said to be uh, your energizing power. It's hard for people to want to believe, but that's the way it is. It says, in like manner, the saved are said to be energized by God. 
For it is God which works in you both to will and do the his good pleasure. And so if you ever find yourself feeling like you might be doing, because we sin, you know, like if you get mad at a family member and you lash out at them, that's not God. That's your flesh. Okay. But you're primarily energized by God if you're saved. Okay. He has more power over you than the devil. The testimony of these two passages is to the effect that there is now no such thing as an independent human life. Men are either energized by God or by Satan. And accordingly, as they are saved or unsaved. So when you say that you know someone and they don't proclaim to be a Christian or saved by the grace of God, but they're good, or you seem to think that they're good because of the things that they do in their conduct. Remember, there's none good and I'm not one. The only thing good in us is Jesus Christ, his nature makes us good. It makes us reveal the fruits of the Spirit. Which are, there's 12 of them, charity or love. Charity encompasses our love for God and our neighbors. This kind of love is not simply a passing feeling or infatuation. It's an agape love. It's a different kind of love. Joy. We all want to be happy, but the happiness found in earthly things is fleeting. Peace. Peace is tranquility that can be experienced when we put our complete trust in God. Patience. Patience allows us to have compassion over people in spite of their flaws and weaknesses. Are you patient? Do they get on your nerves? This fruit comes from an understanding of our own imperfect state and how God has given us his unconditional love and mercy so we should do the same for others. Kindness. Kindness is more than being kind to others. It's having a heart that's willing to do acts of compassion and give to others above and beyond what we owe to them. Like your spouse, you don't empty the dishwasher because it's your turn. You may have compassion and empty the dishwasher because you just love them and you're going to empty it anyway. I know that sounds goofy, but it's compassion, kindness, doing something beyond what you owe to somebody. Goodness. Being good involves constant renouncing of evil in our day to day actions. When we are good, we are constantly seeking the path of righteousness and strive to do God's will even at the expense of earthly success. Long, gun, long, I can't even say this word. Let me make it, say it for me. Oh, where is my, I'm trying to find a, a it says longanimity, longanimity. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not the best at pronouncing stuff. Longanimity is being patient even when being provoked. Wow, that's a big one, ain't it? 
while patience involves tolerance, longanimity means enduring quietly and remaining steadfast in the midst of attacks of others. Wow, that really requires the Holy Spirit, don't it? Mildness. To be mild in behavior means having a heart of forgiveness and grace. It means not being easily provoked and choosing a response of meekness and peace rather than one that leads to revenge. Faith. Faith is at the core of our Christianity. To have faith, it means to live according to the will of God and believing that he is the master of our life. Modesty. Being modest means being humble. It is believing that any of our successes, blessings, and talents are gifts from God. Not, it's not selfish ambitions. Countenance means, countenance, having temperance and self-control. That's a big one. And chastity means giving ourselves to Christ completely whether as a priest, religious, or layman, all vocations are called to have chase in their way of living. Chastity also means indulging our physical desires within the right context, such as being sexually pure before marriage and by remaining faithful to one's spouse. Those are fruits of the Spirit, okay? So either you're energized by God or Satan. I hope if you're listening, you're energized by God. I hope if you're listening that you can see that none of those 12 things are the fruits of the Spirit of God comes naturally. It doesn't. They're all from God. So if someone is good, if you are good, it's only because Christ lives in you. And the Holy Spirit guides you with these 12 aspects. Okay. All righty. I hope y'all enjoyed Bible study today. And maybe it brought some light on um, to something to help you. Um, it was long again. But it was a good message, wasn't it? Um, I hope to see you guys today in the back of the house and show you our apartment. I do want to go get a few groceries. I have no groceries. I'm thinking about making biscuits or something for y'all today. So y'all have a wonderful day, and remember to read the prayer requests that I list today. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for today. We thank you for the beautiful sun that rose this morning, and the beautiful that life that we have in Christ Jesus. We thank you for these spruits fruits of the spirit that we just read and may we see that all the kindness the goodness the meekness the patience and virtues come from jesus christ that there's no good within us independently from you may you be with us may we be examples so that others who are in the path of satan who are unsaved can see what Christ can do in the life of a believer. May we pray for the lost. Be with those who have the special needs and prayer requests today. May you put your arms around them, comfort them, and bless them as this day goes by. Uh, thank you for the group, and thank you for the love that you give us to love on each other. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Y'all have a wonderful and blessed day. And thanks so much for watching Real Southern Woman, where we love God and we are not ashamed to say it. Bye, y'all. Love you.